Oh, beautiful. Astrophyta mysterious going off underneath the black brush, blooming. All, all lit up. Half submerged, but definitely responding from the recent rains we got. In a beautiful lichen community, dormant right now. Recently dried up, and of course, astrophytum. All lit up underneath the black brush. And lots of pig damage. They're even going for the thelocactus. We just found this uprooted. Thelocactus by color, great species. Beautiful pink flowers, vivid as hell. Lit up. Spiny and mean, yet also delicate. Looks so many of us, but the roots have been gnawed off. This and ancestral cactus are what the pigs are doing here. But I've also seen them. I've also seen them taking huge chunks out of the astros too. Just travesty. I'd love to round all of them up and just turn them into bacon. Such a specific habitat type here. You see this kind of habitat with the the varilla, texana, asteraceae, and the open spaces and the grass and the spot where, where water obviously pools up and then cracks open, you know there's going to be astrophytum here. Or at least there is for now until the pigs remove the rest of it. And they've, they've destroyed so much. Last time I was here, I remember seeing giant, you know, star cactus with huge bite marks in them from the pigs and then of course we've already found a lot of uprooted ancestral cactus and uh, hamato cactus they just dig these holes and uproot them and eat the roots and then leave them to die but let's see what we got any astros here there we go little guy they grow fast one of the fastest growing cacti thelo cactus looking good you can see there's this spot gets muddy as hell. These things love mud, they love water, they love heat. They love water if there's enough heat. They really need that heat. You try and grow these things below like 85 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to have trouble. They're just not going to do that well. But, you know, it's, it's okay to give them water if it's super hot. They prefer a lot of it, actually, if it's very hot. They just need that heat. Oh, it's a couple of happy astros. See that? They, they just flowered. Oh, that's got a developing fruit. Oh, this is iconic over here. Look at that. That's a beautiful specimen. Oh, see, you get the backdrop of the gravels, huh? Like a fine woven tapestry. Ah. Oh. See, the epidermal tissue of the astro is a little, uh, it's a little orange and weathered as well. So common in the trade, too, so easy to grow from seed, a relatively fast-growing cactus. It makes no sense to poach. I don't think many people do poach it here in South Texas, but plenty of people do bulldoze it to build uh, solar farms, and plenty of pigs do eat it. Feral hogs do eat it. That's why, you know, you got to really, you got you to gotta take them out. You got to trap them and remove. Look at that. So cryptic. You could walk over 50 of these things and not know they're there unless they're flowering. Nice Thilo Texas garden amongst the varilla. Why does nobody grow varilla Texana? A succulent member of Asteraceae. A succulent little daisy. A, a succulent Chinese meal. Oh, are you the one they call Amorexia? Or Cochlospermum? The artist formerly known as Amorexia? I've grown you from seed before. How lovely to see you there. Oh, there's one looking good. I feel like there's so much less than there was last time I was here. Those brown things are the seeds. So there was a fruit that already dehissed, and those are seeds. I should probably scatter some of those around here. That's nice. They're not all wiped out, but I feel like there was a, a lot more here. There was higher density, and now they're gone, either drought or pigs. I did see some with giant bite marks taken out of them. To, you know, pig damage, obviously. A nice, it looks like a camasaracha, like a white, quinky little lobata, nightshade family. So nice. Hole there, hole there. Bunch of holes, and I don't think it's digging, I think it's pigs. Pigs digging. I don't think anyone's coming out here to poach. Nobody cares enough about plants out here to do that. Happy little astro in the mud, surrounded by grass growing beneath the Tassa Hill. Louis hanging in there, too. She tolerates a lot of this.
you know, there's certainly been a, a lot that have been dug up, though. There's way, way less dense of a population than I saw here even two years ago. Such an honor to be here with you, sir. Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh. to reroute that guy. Yeah, one here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we've recovered nine ancestros. This is just like what I saw happen with Mammillaria sphirica and Hydra. You start seeing them dug up. Yeah, look at that. These are all pig. That's all pig damage. And then within a few years, you're not even seeing them anymore. You're not seeing them dug up anymore because you're just not seeing them anymore because they've all been wiped out. It's the same thing that happened with so many other cacti species. These animals are so destructive. You can see why people shoot them from helicopters. Varilla is such a great plant. Someone should really learn how to grow that because that would make an excellent plant in cultivation. It's so tough. Just so, It could take salt water. It takes lousy soil. It takes full sun. But the reason the pigs are going for these guys is because this species, Ancestra cactus, makes a tuberous root. Makes like a little potato. Yeah, look at, look at that. God. This is watching the extirpation of a species. It's watching it get wiped out from a region. And like almost nobody's monitoring this too, especially if it's happening on private property. That's tragic. So we're we're here at the thorn scrub, looking at one of the largest populations of Lofafra williamsii, and the only reason that this is here, despite all the extensive pig damage, is because of the black brush. But that gives you an idea of what used to be everywhere what well, used to be way more common but the feral pig damage has just been extensive and they'll see this and they don't they don't they'll take a bite they don't really eat a lot of it because it's so bitter due to the 50 plus alkaloids but they'll uproot it you can see someone tried a little taste right there if they could even get their head through here and uh they'll uproot it and then just leave it for dead so um, I think the only reason this is here is because this black brush is just such a pain in the ass for them to get through and it protects a lot of them. It makes like a little cage uh, around here. So that's what has, has saved this. But this is probably, oh yeah, look, this has already been, someone tried the nibble, it looks like. There's a little piece in there. But we would find clumps that weren't in the black brush areas that were just uprooted. You know, and then of course other species like Mammillaria spherica, Mammillaria hyderi, and cactus. They love the ancestral cactus. Uh, we'd find completely uprooted with holes. They eat the roots and then leave the thing for dead because a lot of those cactus species have big tuberous roots. But this thing, I mean, this has got to be God knows how old. This is a massive individual. So this has got to be a century or two centuries old at least. So we had the Comanches down here a couple weeks ago. They came just to pray and, uh, you know, talk to the plants and stuff. And we we weren't able to show them this. We didn't bring them to this part of the land. It was a little farther out than they wanted to go. But this is, you know, something like this, especially for members of the Native American church, would be so important to see. So thankfully it's protected. It's going to be a couple century old plant and look look at that and then there's pig holes right over there but really this this black brush forest is how nasty the black brush can be and how thick it can be is why this stuff is here it's literally protecting these plants to mention this rich duff it is. That it is. It's like being around an old redwood. It's yeah. like being around a two thousand year old coast redwood. It's massive respect. The see the ability to die back, and then resprout. Karwinski. You you'd see this before the rains we got two weeks ago. You'd think it was dead, but it was not. It was still alive at the roots. And this species goes all the way down, goes very far south, like deep into southern Mexico, Chiapas. I think it might even go into Nicaragua, Honduras. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta take your shoes off when They're you come in squishy. here. Wait, where is it? Point to it again? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, 
You rarely see mushrooms like this down here in South Texas, but you got these, what is surely a, a puffball of some kind, a sculpted puffball popping up from beneath the black brush. Massive, things the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> 